This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a tablet comparison smackdown between three major tablets. We have the new iPad with Retina display, the Google Nexus 10 Android tablet, and the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch. All very different tablets, but they have a lot of overlap with what they can do. And we're going to look at them now. So you know you want a tablet, but you're not sure which one. Now this this comparison smackdown is for you kind of tablet newbies out there, not those of you who already know you adore your iPad or you want an Android tablet or you care about nothing but Amazon Kindle Fire content. You're kind of open to all of those right now and you can't decide. And we got three major players right here. So on that end, we have the iPad with Retina display, 9.7 inch display, 1.46 pounds. Resolution, a very impressive 2048 by 1536. And in the middle, we have the newcomer here. This is the Google Nexus 10. Official Google tablets available directly from Google's website, or you can also pick it up some stores like Walmart and Staples. Hard to find in stock now, but 10.1 inch display, usual 16 by nine aspect ratio. And the king of resolution right now at 2560 by 1600. It's a PLS display, which is Samsung's version of IPS. Samsung is actually the one who makes the tablet here. Super stunning, really nice. And then lastly, no slouch, though the most affordable, is the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch model. This is the bigger of the two Kindle Fire HDs. It has a 1920 by 1200 display, so higher than 1080p display here, which is pretty impressive because it's squeezed into this 8.9 inch IPS display. All of them definitely good for reading. These are three of the highest resolution tablets on the market. And for pricing, we have $299 for the 16 gig Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch. If you want a higher capacity, it's going to cost more. If you want the LTE model, it's going to cost you $499. It's getting kind of pricey for a Kindle. The Nexus 10 starts at $399 for the 16 gig. It's $499 if you want the 32 gig. There is no 3G, 4G model of that. So if that's something important to you, the Nexus 10 is going to be out of the kind of contention for you. And lastly, the iPad 4 starts at $499, that's for the 16 gig Wi-Fi model. It goes up from there if you want 32 gig capacity to 64 gig capacity if you want the 4G LTE model. You can go all the way up into the lower $800 if you want the maxed out 64 gig with LTE and there's many increments in between. When it comes to speed, I have to say that generally the iPad, the latest greatest iPad has always been the fastest tablet on the block. and Finally, with the Nexus 10, thanks to its pure Android without any custom overlays or manufacturers running Jelly Bean 4.2 here, this is a very fast tablet, very responsive. The whole UI just zips right around. None of those occasional lags that you see in Android. Noticeably faster than the Asus Infinity Transformer TF700, which was one of the fastest tablets on the block, except for its internal flash storage was kind of slow, so it always bogged it down. So. No complaints here, finally, about the Nexus 10 when you're talking about just pure speed of the UI. Of course, the iPad's always really zippy and responsive. Well tuned to that. It's very easy for Apple to do that, relatively speaking, because they make both the hardware and the software, so they have complete control over the experience. Obviously, that's one of the benefits for the Nexus products, too, because Google specs out the hardware, even though they have a partner build it. But still, pretty fast. The Kindle Fire, the carousel here of applications, that swings by pretty quickly. If you're switching between, say, books and music, notice how it takes just a little bit. Kindle Fire is not the fastest guy on the block. If you're buying a Kindle Fire, you're probably not buying it because you want the most blazing fast tablet. Really, it, it's targeted at consumers who are pretty much Amazon lovers. Those of you who have a lot of Kindle eBooks, you're Amazon Prime members, so you get a lot of free streaming videos. You like Amazon Instant Video, their MP3 store. The Google Application Store, or rather Application Store, not Google Application Store, but Amazon's own, which has about 50,000 apps, a lot fewer than the Google Play Store, and you cannot use the Google Play Store here on the Kindle Fire HD, but still, pretty good selection of apps. You can sideload apps if you're a little bit geeky. So that's 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 the important thing to think about with the Fire tablet. It, it's not just that it's fairly affordable for something that has a really nice large IPS display at, it's the perfect consumption tool for Amazon services and Amazon products, and you know you know who you are. If that's something you're interested in, you could care less whether the tablet has a GPS, whether you can hack it, root it, do interesting things like that to it, then Fire HD is probably for you. To compare the Fire HD with the Nexus 10 a little bit more, they are really on opposite ends of the spectrum. The Nexus 10 is just pure Android. Nothing is added on. No little handy-dandy applications like MS Office suites that manufacturers are usually put on there are carriers. So you've got just the basics pre-installed here, which means the full Google suite. You get your YouTube, you get your web browser, email, Gmail, all that kind of stuff. Nothing extra added on. So 
Definitely more for the power user here. Those of you who already know what Android apps you like, what things you want to load on there, whereas Kindle has a very directed experience. You're going to switch between your books, your music, your video library, both internally stored videos and Amazon instant video selections. Your application store, if we go here, you can see what that looks like, in case you have not watched our video review of this, which you should. So we're going to look at apps, and those are presented in the same bookshelf metaphor. Now with the Nexus 10, you have your standard Android interface, and this is your application drawer. All apps are here, and you can switch to widgets right there. And speaking of widgets, because this is just standard Android, you can put whatever widgets you want on here. Like we have a widget for our video library that's on the Google Play Store. With, with the Kindle Fire HD, no widgets. It's all the carousel UI and the various drawers that represent your different content types. Now, obviously, with the iPad, nothing has changed really since iOS first came out. You have an application grid right here. Pretty straightforward. Nothing's ever going to change there. Nothing really that you can change or customize other than moving the application icons around and changing whatever apps are in your quick launch dock down here. So, super simple interface, not terribly customizable. Uh, a lot more similar to Android here where you have your app drawer. Very different from the Kindle Fire HD. And while we're on the topic of applications, of course, you know that that's always been a comparison point between Android and iOS devices. Now, certainly Google is caught up. The Google Play Store has a whole lot of applications. We're getting close to what's available for iOS. But, aha, uh -huh, tablet optimized applications. There are still a lot more tablet optimized applications, which means they will look good. You'll see high quality, crisp images, that kind of thing for iOS tablets. Now, the staples are available for both of these guys. If you want Netflix, if you want the Weather Channel, all that kind of stuff, Office Suites, available in tablet form for both iOS and for the Nexus 10 here and Android tablets in general. But when you get into things like games, the winner is still going to be the iPad because there are just so many high quality games available. And there's a small to medium selection of games that are available for Android tablets, but not nearly as many. You can get Office Suites. In fact, you can see I have an Office Suite downloaded here. If it's available on Amazon's application store, you can get it. They have a lot of casual games. They have some of the more demanding 3D games. And performance on this is actually pretty good, even though it doesn't have the fastest CPU among these. But not the selection that you're going to find even for full Android tablets like the Nexus 10. Now, what CPUs are inside? 1.2 gigahertz Apple. A6X CPU with a quad-core GPU in the iPad with Retina Display 4th generation there. Very capable. Apple does not need to jack up the clock speeds as high as Android tablets does because, again, the, the operating system is so highly optimized for the hardware that they don't need as much inside. But that A6X CPU is a very impressive CPU. Don't go just by clock speeds alone. Inside of the Kindle Fire HD 8.9, we have a 1.5 GHz TI OMAP dual core CPU. That's a pretty good CPU. It's 300 MHz faster than on the Kindle Fire HD 7 inch because, well, it's pushing more pixels around. It needs a little bit more processing power. And lastly, the Nexus 10, well, it has a dual core GPU, but it's the Samsung Exynos CPU, always a high performer of the Exynos, and it's dual core. But don't be disappointed because it's, it's the Exynos 5 versus the quad core. Exynos 4. So you're looking at a newer generation right here, and performance is really very good. I'd say it's certainly comparable to the quad core. And given the fact that a lot of Android applications don't really even make use of all four cores, it's it's not the end of the world. Very fast CPU in here, very fast Mali T604 graphics, 1.7 gigahertz, certainly a screamer, certainly in, in the hardware specs, right? It's looking very impressive there. So for those of you who are specs hounds, you just want the fastest possible hardware inside. The Nexus 10 is going to beat out the Kindle Fire HD. Now, when we're talking about it versus the iPad 2 here, both of these guys are very responsive. They're both very fast, uh, running different, different operating systems, so a little difficult to compare there. When we talk about things like cross-platform tests, like SunSpider JavaScript tests, iOS 6 really optimized for that test. So we're talking low 900s, where lower numbers are better. 1200 for Chrome on the Nexus 10. Chrome is not the sharpest knife in the drawer right now in terms of browsing speed. It's not a terrible browser, but it's, it's actually not generally as fast as the old WebKit web browser that was found in older Android releases. And here we have the Silk browser. That's what Amazon calls their customized WebKit browser. It's actually a pretty capable browser, especially if you turn off that Silk feature that uses caching on the server to try to pull preloaded web page data. If you turn that off, not bad, and we're talking 1,276 here for SunSpider JavaScript, and here on the Nexus 10, 10,075. 
All of those, honestly, are quite fast. I don't think you can tell the difference empirically using the device. Now, when it comes to the web browsing experience, we're using the built-in browser on each of these. This means the Silk browser on the Fire HD, this is Chrome on the Nexus 10, and we have Safari on the iPad, all looking at our homepage, obviously. They work in different orientations. Both of these, or rather all three of these, can work in portrait and landscape mode. And you can see the speed is certainly phenomenal here on our Zippy Nexus 10. Likewise, off the iPad, even a little bit faster and more responsive still when it comes to things like zooming and scrolling. And lastly, pretty good here. You can notice it's not quite as fast as the other two, though. Now, that's not the end of the world. You can certainly get your browsing done, and it's not a bad experience, but you can see the order of speed right now for web browsing using the stock browser. The iPad is the fastest, Nexus 10 close second, Kindle Fire HD 8.9 the third. And for page load times, let's all go for the same page on these. Pretty similar, considering the order that I started doing that in. About the same for actually loading pages, so not too bad. All of these can play HTML5 format video. They do not do Adobe Flash out of the box. However, if you're adventurous and you want to load the Boat Browser and Adobe Flash side loader, get it from Adobe's website, you can bring it onto the Nexus 10. But these days, so many sites have switched over HTML5, I'm not complaining about the lack of Flash. Now how about screen sharpness and clarity? Again, these are all the highest resolution tablets on the market, so all of them are really excellent for reading. Obviously the Kindle Fire, it has a custom version of the Kindle application on here, lots of formatting options, but unless you, you're clever and you know how to sideload things, you're just going to be using the Kindle Reader here. With the iPad and with the Nexus 10, you can load the Nook application, you can install the Kindle application, the Sony Reader application, the Google Books application on the Nexus 10, so you have a lot to choose from. Text on all of these really sharp. You can see how nice graphics look too. And let's switch over to some text right here. And the Kindle Fire looking good. As you can see, it has a little bit of a warmer display, which is kind of nice for reading. Also nice for watching videos because it brings out the flesh tones. And cool white or bluish pages can be a little hard on the eyes. I would say that the iPad actually has the most blue tint to the display, but none of them are bad by any means. Now, in terms of pixel density, we're talking 264 ppi on the Retina iPad, which is quite high, but 300 on the Nexus 10. That's right now our, the, the tops for tablets. And not far behind, the iPad is Kindle Fire HD at 254 pixels per inch. Can you see the difference between 264 or 254? No, you can't. Can you even see the difference between 264 and 300? If you really look close, maybe you can. Now, if you're jumping from the Kindle Fire to here, you have almost a 50 ppi density. I would say that, honestly, they all look awesome. But if you're looking really close and really tight, uh, the text on the Nexus 10 is actually the winner. Even at this small type size right here, man, very easy to read. And you won't see any pixels, any jaggies on any of these. But really, the most perfectly formed fonts are actually on the Nexus 10. But again, all of them, very high quality displays, wide viewing angles, quite bright. Fairly neutral whites, really sharp text. Now how about video playback? Well first of all, listen to the speakers. This is the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9 right here. Awesome stereo speaker, speakers, Dolby Mobile Audio. Quite loud. It turns down a little bit here. Good looking video, very warm flesh tones, very sharp, nice experience, and that's, that is one of the selling points here for the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 inch over the 7 inch model. For those of you who do watch a lot of videos, going up to that almost 2 inches in screen size is really nice for watching videos. When you're watching a 7 inch, it's kind of like watching a, well, an old fashioned 13 inch TV or something. When you move up to this, it's kind of roomy. All three of these can play HD videos, that's 1080p videos, no problem. In fact, you can go considerably higher on the Nexus if you want to, since it does have a higher resolution screen, but typically you're not going to find much beyond 1080p video available to stream or to play locally anyway. Now we got video playing on the Google Nexus 10 here. Also very good speakers, front facing right here, rimming the display, so you're not likely to block them too much. It also gets pretty loud. Right now we have it up at about 
Plenty loud. So, what's the play? Smooth, nice looking. Very sharp, good color tones. Also nice for video playback. Honestly, any of these is going to be nice. I would say go by the size that you want the most and whose video store you use the most. If you're an Amazon customer, get the Kindle Fire. If you like the Google Play Store, get the Nexus 10. If you like iTunes, you should get the iPad. Now we've got the iPad playing a 1080p trailer. It's doing a great job. The loudest, slightly tinnier sounding because it's the one that has the mono speaker, but it certainly does get loud. Beautiful looking as well. And of course, all of these have 3.5 millimeter stereo jacks if you'd rather listen through external speakers or your headphones as well. Now with the iPad here and with the Nexus 10, you can install Netflix and Hulu Plus, and the same thing is true of the Kindle Fire HD as well. So you're not limited to just the built-in stores that are on the devices there. It opens up your options a little bit. You can also use the web browser to watch TV show, like ABC has uh, streaming players. A lot of them are moving over to HTML5 video again, so you can watch those things. Now how about HDMI out if you want to use this as your streaming or locally stored source for your HD TV. You can do that on all these devices. Both the Kindle Fire HD and the Nexus 10 have micro HDMI ports. You just need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. And with the iPad you have to buy Apple's separate lightning dongle adapter so you can connect to HD output on HDMI. Now how about camera? Kindle Fire HD, that's not really about having a full set of features. For example, there is no GPS in it unless you get the LTE model and you only get a front camera. It's an HD camera and it actually works nicely with the pre-installed Skype, but it's just a front HD camera. The two big guys here, you get HD cameras, 1.9 megapixel on the Nexus 10, 1.2 on the iPad, but they both do equally as well and give pleasantly exposed and reasonably colorful video if you're using something like Skype. Now on the back they both have 5 megapixel cameras. There's an LED flash on the back of both of these as well. And they take fairly similar quality photos and video. Both can shoot 1080p video. You can simultaneously, in fact, capture photos while shooting video. I give a little bit of an edge to the iPad. Probably it's that nice backside illuminated sensor that helps a bit with that, but it does quite well. But in either case, if you don't mind waving a 10-inch tablet around, both of these are fairly confident for taking photos and video. Now in terms of design and looks and what the back's like, we, I think we all know what the iPad looks like at this point. It's very pleasing, very modern, aluminum industrial design. Uh, a little bit thicker than the skinniest iPad that was ever on the market and that's good. It makes it a little bit easier to hold. The Nexus 10 has an interesting design. I don't know any other way to put it. It's very thin, 3.5 inches, and you get this very rubbery texture. It actually feels great to hold. Personally, I think this is not a very attractive looking tablet. If you look in the back side of it, the kind of ovalness is a little bit weird. Uh, it's just kind of matte rubbery black, though the rubber does reflect light in some cases. You have a little stippling here, but while it may not be the, the most gorgeous tablet, it feels great in hand. Being thin and being grippy and rubbery, it just feels nice. And let's say the Kindle Fire HD 8.9, also nice. It has a soft touch finish, not nearly as rubbery as the Nexus, but it looks good. It's a clean, modern design. I kind of like the racing stripe here that offsets the stereo speakers on either side. Also fairly nice to hold, thanks to the finish and thanks to the fairly soft sides. It's also 0.35 inches, so all of these guys are about the same thickness. How about battery life? All of these do relatively better than average given their size class. The iPad with Retina display, for us, has averaged 10.5 hours of use, which is pretty good, or several days on a charge easily, unless you're playing 3D games on any of these. If you're playing demanding 3D games, expect to charge a lot more often, but otherwise, that's what it's good for. Now, the Nexus 10 has a 9,000 milliamp battery, which is pretty capable, but so far we found that it lasts 8 hours on a charge, so it doesn't quite match the iPad 4 Retina display. And lastly, the Kindle Fire HD has been lasting us nine hours on a charge. One thing I will say about the Kindle Fire line of tablets, remarkable standby, really longer than any other tablet. They really design it as something that you're going to pick up and use once in a while, read a book, watch a movie, and then leave for a couple of days, and the charge just doesn't go away. It's, it's really impressive in that way. So that's our tablet comparison smackdown. We've got the iPad with Retina display here, fourth generation, the Google Nexus 10 tablet, Google's first 10-inch tablet, and the Kindle Fire HD 8.9. All are great. All have very high resolution displays, wide viewing angles, very bright, very sharp, great for watching movies, great for reading books. 
and two of them have 3G, 4G if you need that for wireless data available anywhere. So who are these products for? Obviously Kindle Fire HD 8.9 is for you Amazon consumers first and foremost since you have very turnkey easy access to all sorts of Amazon content, be it music, videos, Amazon Prime free streaming videos, books, magazines. Nexus 10 is really for you power users. You really want a nice high spec tablet with a phenomenal display, easy to root, easy to put custom ROMs on, full suite of Google services, nothing getting in the way of that, no custom UI at all. Full tablet with GPS, NFC, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Here we're just looking at Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the Kindle Fire, for example. And lastly, the iPad is for you tablet consumer generalists. You just want something that has a whole lot of applications available. There's lots of accessories on the market. You'll have the widest selection of tablet optimized applications available. And as always, the iPad is very fast and stable. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website and read the full review of each of these tablets. Watch our video reviews of each of these tablets. And do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.